They say now What does a poor boy do? They say now What is it that a poor boy do? Now if I can't get things to change, baby I have to keep on playing the blues They say not You can make it if you try They say not You can make it if you try But these are the days These are the days of our life Now you know sometimes I wonder Then again I begin to cry Yeah, sometimes I wonder Then again I begin to cry Why are we trying to live When we're just only living and dying Hard times, hard times Grandmother said you don't know what that is Hard times, hard times My grandmother said you don't know what that is Say you should have been there in Grenada When I was in that Mississippi cotton field I said I ain't never picked no cotton I ain't hauled the bell If I get that bad for my people Somebody gonna take me to jail Oh no Yes, yes, you make it if you try Now, now tell me You gotta tell me the reason why They said no You can make it if you try They said no You can make it if you try And these are the days These are the days of our life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's a pleasure to have you here at the Sanders Sound Stage here at the Grammy Museum, Mississippi, here in Cleveland. Have you all been here before? No, first time. First time first for me time. also. Is, now, but you all have been to Mississippi <clears throat> before, is that yeah. right? Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. I, now, I think I saw you at the B.B. King Museum a couple years ago. Yeah, Is that so right? My, my family from Grenada, Mississippi, so right down the road. That's right. Yeah, I've um, been here a few times. I played for the opening of the Cat Head Distillery up in Jackson. And I also uh, had an aunt used to stay at Ocean Spring. Okay. And just, just to clarify, you are John Tavius Woods. I am John Tavius Woods. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Marquise Knox. I didn't explain which was which. but. Uh, Yeah, so you've uh, so you tell me about that. You've had a long-standing relationship with uh, Mississippi. Then you are part of that great migration of people moving up from uh, Mississippi up up north. A lot of people stopped in St. Louis, and that's something a lot of people don't know about. In yeah, St. Louis was stumbling grounds, the first place before you go to Chicago. You come to St. Louis. You know, even when Muddy was explaining one of his interviews, he said he first tried to make it big. He said, "I come to St. Louis." He said, "But I couldn't." make nothing, so he come back to Mississippi. Then he went to Chicago. <laughs> the honey boy stopped off in St. Louis. And my people, you know, uh, my grandmother was born in 1932 in Grenada County, Mississippi. So I, I got the blues all the way in my bone. Well, now, darling, you know we made our plan. And talked about how we had our future in our hand, but we should have known a woman from the start that even the best of friends, you know, they have to part. 
But you keep asking me What do I want to do? You keep asking me What do I want to do? I'd rather be hurt by her Than to be loved by you I would ask you to explain yourself That will keep us here too long But now, woman I guess it's all in the past And I hope that you love it Exactly where you at But you keep asking me What do I want to do? You keep asking me What do I want to do? I'd rather be hurt by her Than be loved by you You keep asking me What do I want to do? Asking what do you want to do She tweet me on Twitter Asking what do you want to do Well I turn my phone on in the morning Text message say what do you want to do She even went and talked to the preacher Preacher said nah 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 son I said, Knox, what are you gonna do? I said, I'd rather be hurt by her than to be loved by you. <laughs> How old are you guys now? 26 and 21. That age thing get thrown up a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you too young. I guess folks think that all these blue men started when they were 60 and 70 years old. <laughs> and all they were born in Velocity Pickle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand, you know, but you have to, it's just like any popular music, because the blue would want, want some popular music. Right. So you started at a young age, so you know. Luxurious man ain't it grand I feel I have a wonderful taste Baba Luxurious man oh ain't it grand It's my business if I let my money go to waste I got 45 horses and they all in the stable And I don't wear no clothes if it ain't got a label Because I am a luxurious man Ain't it grand I feel I have wonderful taste. Luxurious man, oh, ain't it grand? It's my business if I let my money go to waste. They say, boy, oh, boy, you don't know how to act. You just bought a Mercedes. Now you getting a Cadillac. I sure am because I am a luxurious man. Ain't it grand? I feel I have wonderful taste. Luxurious man, no, uh -uh. ain't it grand? It's my business if I let my money go to waste. I'm gonna buy me some mansions way up on a hill, cause when I get my money, I do just as I will, cause I am a luxurious man, yeah. Ain't it grand? I feel I have wonderful taste. Now, rag it out. Luxurious man, ain't it grand? 
I feel like I have a wonderful day. Luxurious man, oh, any grand. It's my business if I let my money go to waste. I got an alligator shoe with a crocodile coat. And the fur around my collar is made of mountain goat because I am a luxurious man. Ain't it grand? I feel I have wonderful taste. Pretty mama, don't you hear your daddy cry? You have been a great advocate for early Georgia Blues. Who were some of your favorite artists over there? Mm, Peg Leg Howe, Tampa Red from Georgia. And by the way, Tampa Red likes the only person in blues history to sell seven million, I think it was five or seven million records. It was 1929. Just want to throw that out there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Blind Willie McTell, Curly Weaver, uh, Barbecue Bob, the list goes on and on. I said I got a tiptoe Trying not to get caught I said I got a tiptoe Trying not to get caught Laying here now in this bed Did I know that I ain't bought What the hell, dog? Uh, I said I got a tiptoe I can't make a sound. Said I got a tiptoe. I can't make a sound. If he find me here, it's show bound to be a show bound. I said he come to the front. I gotta go to the back door. Oh, he come in the front, uh, she tell me to run out the back door. This was definitely a close call. Don't think I'm a tiptoe no more. Trying not to get caught. Laying in this bed, did I know that I didn't buy? buy, buy, buy. Part of the business is also right. making sure that the culture is represented, and you cannot represent the culture if you don't have the people there that's willing to talk about it. Now, I say, if I was a black man, I want to play. And I just show up and I said, all right, this Marquise Knox, and I'm going back home. Well, what have you learned? But if I take time and I explain to you why the blues is and what it is and we talk about who I am and who you are, now we're getting somewhere. That's my goal is to make sure we bring the community because I think out of all the stuff we crying for now as a community of black people, I don't think we need to ask anybody or tell anybody that Black Lives Matter. Listen to our music. Listen to our music. Our music tell you. Walton, Eric Davis too, a voice said knocks, they can't get you, here I am, a 
and you can't deny I'm too sweet to die I'm too sweet to die I'm too sweet to die Well I looked around at all I had Now let me tell you people I didn't feel so bad So when they see me You know they can't deny I'm too sweet to die I'm too sweet to die I'm too sweet to die Well I don't know But I tell you, people, I got the blue. When you see me, you can't deny I'm too sweet to die. I'm too sweet to die. I'm too sweet to die. They got little Walter and Eric Davis, too. A voice said, Nobs, they ain't gonna get you. So here I am, and you can't deny. People say they dying out, but they never go look for it. They stay where they stay where they at, and they say, "Oh, the blue dying. Where have you been?" Right. <laughs> no, no, no. Where have you looked for it? Right. So the blues ain't died. It took a little rest. Well, they finna wake up. Right. Finna wake up. <laughs> it ain't. I, I know too many, too many young guys. You know, too many that I, it, it won't never die. Turn on your TV It don't matter if it's day or night You can turn on your TV It don't matter if it's day or night Is the world in a sickening condition And I'm expected to sit back and act like everything's alright How many mothers done prayed How many fathers done went to bed crying How many fathers done prayed? How many mothers done went to bed crying? We ought to make this a better place. Or we ought to die trying. People ask me why I sang them old blue songs. People ask me why I sang them old blue songs. Well, them are the songs of my ancestors. To pass hard time like these alone. I gotta tell you something. Watch out. Just 
just to bring you a little new. I gotta tell you something. Thank you. One of the reasons we're here today is because here at the uh, Grammy Museum, Mississippi, we've got this wonderful exhibit on John Lee Hooker. And I was just wondering if you all could talk about him, talking about him as a, as a role model or his music, what it means to you. Or where does he fit into the blues? He's this great icon, and I think to a lot of people represents the, the deepness of the blues traditions. John Lee one of those uh, unique characters because he, uh, <laughs> He sung and played how he felt. Like he didn't, it didn't matter. He didn't have no, it might have been 13 bars and a half. He didn't necessarily rhyme either. He felt like whatever he wanted to say and whatever he wanted to do in that guitar, he did. It wasn't just uniform like, you know, a lot of folk playing it out. I'm trying to think. They told me John Lee Hooker go in the recording studio and one practice and then he'll go in there and knock it out just like that. And I feel like if everybody had that unique approach about it and start trying to, you know, cut and dry everything, we could take that from him. That's what I took from him. I was watching this a documentary last night. He said I didn't have the, he said I didn't have the education. He said, but if I'd have had stayed in school, he said, I'd have still been in the books. He said, but I threw the books away and I got the book of life that God gave me. And so he's been went all around the world. So you can't do nothing but respect a man like you that. You are correct. Just start coming round. 